Let's talk a little bit about the JT12, JT60 engine configuration. They're one and the same, designed in around 57 um, and went into service in the early 60s. Um, the reason there's two classifications for the engine is one was dedicated for civilian use and one for military use. They're the same engine. Puts out about 3,400 pounds of thrust. Um, the stock airframe put only put out about 1,800 pounds of thrust. So we're almost doubling the amount of thrust coming out of the back end of this airplane. Um, I'm fortunate enough to race, uh, race 77 for Warbirds of Delaware. And I have quite a few um, hours in this airframe and it is amazing performance wise. Let's talk a little bit about the engine first. So it's a nine stage compressor with a two stage um, hot section. Uh, it's a turbojet engine, axial flow. Some performance numbers, and again, made by Pratt & Whitney uh, in Canada. Um, and this engine is readily available. Parts are available for it. It can be overhauled at a reasonable amount of money, and it has an exceptionally long time before overhaul. Performance numbers, I'm gonna talk very general here um, because it kind of depends which dash number of engine you install, and also how heavy is your airplane, um, and obviously environmental factors. But some general numbers. Takeoff roll, 800 feet. Rate of climb, 7,000 feet a minute. Cruise performance. This is where throttle management makes a huge difference. So if you cruise this aircraft at a high power setting, you can get 400 knots plus true airspeed, but you'll be burning somewhere around 180 gallons per hour. The beauty of this configuration is if you pull it back to say 290 knots true airspeed, burning about 127 gallons per hour, which is very efficient. Um, the engine likes to be up high um, by its design. It was used in Sabre liner, corporate aircraft. Um, so the higher you get, the better. Um, if you can get up into the you know, 23s, the mid 20s, um, that's where you'll get some really good performance out of this aircraft.